Good evening, it's Kimberly, and um, we are coming to you again in our uh, live broadcast here. And uh, tonight we're going to do something a little different. I am doing a video tonight for all of those out there who haven't um, actually seen us. So if you've stopped scrolling and you found us, welcome. My name is Kimberly. I'm with Unique. Um, finds and furniture designs and I do furniture art and I use Dixie Bell paint products for our um, tutorials and so tonight what I wanted to do is kind of do a um, do this particular um, live workshop for our habitat friends so um, for you habitat um, friends out there that are just joining us and just finding us on this YouTube channel. It's going to be on our YouTube channel and we wanted to kind of welcome you and let you know um, some of the, the products that are featured in this broadcast as well as kind of do a uh, start to finish uh, project here. The furniture that you're seeing in the background um, was purchased at Habitat for um, Humanity. Um, this particular set from Kernersville. Um, there's several different habitats out there. So um, if you pass a habitat, you know, it's always amazing to go in and see what they might have. Yes, this is a vintage set. So it's good for you to see it in um, the condition that it's in because um, I hope you can see on this video that it is um, very yellow. So, and, um, and then, then it's outlined in green. And so what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna try and um, refinish this one particular piece tonight, just to kind of show you it's nighttime for us, but it's gonna be um, probably daytime on our um, YouTube channel where we will be uh, live streaming this, um, hopefully at some of the Habitat Restores for you guys. So that will help you um, when you're walking through the Restore and you're thinking of a project that you might this might not really jump out at you when we paint it tonight it's going to jump out at you and it's going you're going to see some of the furniture in those stores that are kind of sleepers and you're not really thinking oh i never thought about that with that piece but wow here's where we can go with it the piece behind me also is a um, habitat restore piece and i'm going to turn it this way so you can see so this tall dresser is also um in the workshop from habitat and this piece is gonna have a special design done to it. So a lot of times when I go into Habitat, I have my mind set on um, a particular project. Um, I'm open to whatever I see in there because um, a lot of times there are vintage, there's um, eclectic, there is um, mid-century modern. You never know what you're gonna find. So you'll find all different uh, kinds of furniture, but the good thing that I have discovered is that the furniture that you will discover at Habitat, a lot of it is good solid furniture. And so it's been basically um, put in the store and um, these pieces of furniture that we purchase, I purchase them, you guys purchase them. It helps build homes for people. So it's a great um, resource for the community and so we're just going to reach out here and show you guys a quick fix on some vintage furniture that um, you may see in your restore locally and if so um, you may want to snap you up a piece so I'm just gonna bring you on down here and um, let you get a good look-see of the piece we will be working on so this is obviously the, a French country um, piece so this is French country and um, French country cottage, I call it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of these products with you guys and kind to um, show you what I do to um, re actually give these um, pieces of furniture some new life. So I've got some products here. I've got my water mist bottle. I am, like I say, a retailer with Dixie Bell chalk paint. You will see Dixie Bell chalk paint in your restore. And that is me, and we are um, the ones who are bringing that to you to help you refinish some of your pieces. And um, so this is um, the Savannah Mist color. We also have the cleaner here. I also have a color in um, the drop cloth. We also carry the silk line, which I have in the back, which is an all-in-one paint. 
Um, we will be bringing that as well to the Restore. It has the top coat and also has your primer in it as well as your paint. So after you clean it, you can just commence to painting and it's a one step process. So we'll be bringing those products into the Restore to kind of help you guys get a little faster um, end result, if you will. So I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you what I always do first. When I see these pieces, I bring them home and move these products out of my way because the first thing you always want to do to your piece, no matter where you get it from, is clean it. And we have what's called white lightning cleaner. It is a powder cleaner and I do put it in a mist mix bottle and I mix it with warm water and that's what's in this bottle. Now I recycle old bottles. So this was a Bona bottle that I used for floor cleaning and it's a great spray bottle. So I'm reusing it. So reduce, reuse, and recycle along the way as I go. And um, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean my piece. So I have me some gloves here and also I have what I call um, a scotch brite. I'm going to move you up just a tad so you guys can see. Otherwise, we're cutting the top of my head off, right? But I want you to be able to see the furniture more so than me, and I might have to just kind of scoot you all back a little bit to do that. So we're going to come in here. We're going to lightly mist this with our um, cleaner solution, and I'm going to scrub it with this scotch brite. And I am going to use um, my gloves. It just kind of helps, you know, save your skin, all of that. I don't really, um, it's not anything wrong with the cleaner, but... That's why if you ladies out there that have nails, you might want to get you some little slip-on gloves. It's really simple. I got a clean cloth here and this, what I call a Scotch-Brite or a scouring pad. These you can pick up at Lowe's. Um, sometimes I also have those at the Restore for you to um, pick up. I try to be all in one stop shop there, so you will be able to um, pick up some of those items, your brushes and those sort of things as well. You'll see them in our um, display there. We have a cabinet that has our paints with the different products on it. So I'm just going to commence to get started here on this little piece. I'm just going to shake up and start cleaning and misting my piece. We get it good. I give it a good mist. See, this is a wonderful bottle, this Bona bottle. It really has a great mist to it. So I'm just going to mist it down real good. And then I'm going to take my Scotch Brite. And I even kind of mist it a little bit. A lot of times, you guys, we use these on, um, what do I want to say, on our pots and pans. So I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to kind of scrub it down. Now, I did put a pretty good amount of cleaner on here. A lot of times, I, I pay a little extra attention when it comes to around the handles, because that's where everybody's been handling this piece um, in its lifetime. So I want to come in here and get it really, really good. So I'm just gonna get in here and do a little elbow grease. This is the first, always the first step. And I feel like this step, when I do this, it kind of gets me in touch with the piece. If I haven't already walked in the store with an idea of what I'm looking for or what I'm looking to do, then this cleaning process kind of gets me to know the piece. Helps me kind of get in, get in my head and think, hmm, how would I like to paint this? What would I like to do to it? And you might find yourself doing the same thing and then you might change your mind as you get to commence to painting um, what you think you wanted to do at, at the beginning and you may change your mind and that's okay. We have the opportunity, we have the right to change our mind, right? So I've got me a clean cloth here and I'm just gonna come in and these are in really great shape so there's not a lot of body work or any kind of um, um, well, I want to say damage or anything where any repairs might need to be done. So this is a pretty simple um, fix. If you have um, a farmhouse and you want a French country vibe to your farmhouse, you can kind of come in here and make these very farmhouse style, a very cottage style. So I'm just going to come in here, clean back off. So you can see um, is not real, real dirty, but you can see there is some dirt on there from pre from where we began. So I'm just going to come around here, do the same thing. So we've only got a few sides on this. So that's my first process. Always, always, always clean your piece. 
I always, always start, this is every single piece of furniture that I redo, I always start right here. Always, always clean it really good. But you never know. A lot of times there's dusting products on these pieces like Pledge and Old English. Um, you know, any kind of Swiffer dusting products that people use to dust their furniture. We want to make sure that that grease is off. So we're going to make sure that that is not in, that is a, um, inhibits your paint from adhering really nicely if you have any previous um, pledge or holding any kind of waxing agent that's been put on here to dust with. So um, that's what cleaning these are for, is to get any dirt and grind off of them, as well as any um, waxing agent, any dusting agent, I should call it that, dusting agent or waxing agent that might be still on your piece. So you see how long that's taking me. It's not really that hard. It's just a good clean. And you know, and now with the pandemic and all the stuff that we've had, unfortunately we haven't been able to have our workshops in um, the store, in the restore recently, but hopefully we'll be able to bring them back soon. I heard something about near the end of May that um, some of these mass mandates will be uh, lifted. And if that is the case, then we will be happy to bring those workshops back where you can purchase a piece of furniture at the ReStore and we will rehab them right there with you on a weekend. Normally we do those on a Saturday. So now I'm coming across the top here and I am now this is a, a video for the, a lot of you who may have never done your first piece of furniture or anything of that nature and you've seen something at the ReStore that you are falling in love with and think, mm, I don't know if I can tackle that. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can. You can do it as well as I can. It's not, it's not that hard. This is probably the hardest part is cleaning your piece. I, what would I tell everybody? The hardest part for me, and I normally tell everybody the same thing, the hardest part's not going to be doing your piece. The hardest part's really going to be deciding on the color you want to do your piece in, if that makes any sense. So, um, for those of you who already know what their color scheme is, it'll be simple, simple for you. So, um, if you are just joining me, welcome. We are... Um, uh, doing a, a video here for Habitat Restore for those of you who may go in there and um, hopefully we'll be able to stream this for you and you will be able to um, access that as well as the other areas of our YouTube channel where we do all kinds of rehab transformations on furniture not only that we res that we pick up from the restore but from other places as well so there we've pretty much cleaned um, this entire piece so all I had to do there was use my white lightning cleaner which is what I sprayed on in this little spray bottle and yes I'm reusing an old bottle and I used my scotch Bright with it and you can see I took off some of that dirt and grime that you can see on there Hey Ashley, hey Michelle. So if you are um, seeing this for the first time, thank you for jumping on and um, bear with us as we are preparing this. Now I'm gonna get another towel here. And I just use these Terry towels. So I wanna make sure, and I'm gonna take my mist bottle. This is just clear water. I'm just gonna mist it just to take some of my cleaner residue off. So it's just, lightly misting and taking off any of the cleaner residue that I might have on here. Now for me tonight, I am using our chalk line through Dixie Bell, um, and I'm using the drop cloth, as I said, and the Savannah Mist. So those will be the colors that I chose because I am gonna give this a real cute country 
French country feel. And Michelle is on with us. Michelle has a set very similar to this. And um, I did that set for her. And it was very similar. Somewhat different, but very um, French provincial farmhouse. And so we are going to do that tonight. Very similar on these pieces right here. So um, on the very bottom, maybe I can get it back far enough. On the very bottom right here, there was a little um, notch in the paint. So I came in with a little tiny piece of sandpaper here. I got 120 grit, not 80, nothing fancy. And I just came in and just feathered, what I call feathering, and feathered that chip out so that we won't see it when we paint it. And so I didn't have to do much to it, just had a little notch in it, and I cleaned that back off. And now this little beauty is ready to get started. I'm just gonna clean up what little mess I made here. And we can get started on getting this piece underway. So now I'm just gonna shed my gloves because obviously I don't need them when I'm painting. And grab a brush. And let's see, I've got my Savannah Mist here and I've got me some drop cloth. This is the chalk line, however, that we're using tonight. And um, the reason I chose it is because I can blend a little bit better. Well, you can blend a lot better when you're using the chalk line versus the silk line um, because this is more water-based and our silk line is more of an acrylic base. We will learn all about that in future classes um, as we go along. And you will see some of that on our um, YouTube channel. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and get my paint here ready. And my drop cloth and my Savannah Mist. Now, chalk paint normally dries. Our chalk paint normally dries within a 20 minutes. So what I can do is I can come along and do um, the areas that I, I feel like I want to do. And then kind of let it dry a little bit and then come back in. Um, for time purposes. Since I am using the chalk, I have an oval medium brush and I am just going to mist it. You see that fine mist out of that? Get a fine mist bottle. We also have those. And just let my brush be a little bit damp when I am working with my chalk line. Move these lids out of the way. Otherwise, I'll probably sit in them, right? So I'm going to start actually on the side of this piece and um, show you how I am going to do it. I kind of have a, an idea in mind of where I'm going and I am actually gonna start with the drop cloth. And the drop cloth, as you, you will see right here, it's a very, um, very fine, uh, what do I wanna say, kind of not a white, just kind of an off-white off tone. So I'm actually gonna come in here and make this piece a little bit of a two-tone. So uh, I am using the oval medium brush. You see, I do turn my brush a little bit. And this is uh, very yellow. So um, I've seen many of these. I'm just gonna kind of come in here and get some paint on this piece. And you see just how quick, it's not really rocket science, it's not really hard. Hardest part you just saw was cleaning your piece and getting it ready. So you see how quick, after I kind of get all the paint on, I just kind of come back in, very light hand, and kind of wipe my brush strokes away. And that's just the first coat, so um, sometimes we can get by on one coat. So I'm going to do the side like that, and I'm also, just this is just going to be in my head and I'm gonna come in here now and do this inner part. Cause I'm gonna kind of make it a two-tone piece and you'll see what I mean as we come go along here. So I'm just gonna come in here in this area and I'm not worried about the over because I'm gonna come back in with my Savannah Mist anyway. And so I will clean up any lines with my Savannah Mist when I come in. So you'll see how I kind of bring this together. I think I'm gonna do that little green line and you're gonna see this go from this yellow and green piece to something 
much more modern. And even though it still has the classic antique lines, we're still gonna give it kind of a, a much more modern country vibe. So there, I'm just gonna come in here and get that area. Okay, and I'm just gonna do the same here in the center. So I'm just kind of coming along here. I had an idea in my head, so we're just gonna kind of roll with, with the idea and see where it gets me. And you can see all the gorgeous detail in this piece. You're fixing to see that as I'm coming in and getting it, getting my, this is the drop, this is the drop cloth color. I'm just kind of getting in all the edges. Look at the pretty detail in here. Now I can also come back in and make that pop a little bit more with um, either dry brushing. And so I'm gonna do certain areas that I wanna do in this drop cloth. And then you'll kind of see it come to life a little bit more than the old yellow pieces behind us. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this. It might be a little bit lengthy, but you, you guys out there in the um, cyber world that are, uh, will be able to view this on our YouTube. This one will be specifically, we're doing this one specifically for all the newbies. Um, that are, you know, going through Habitat that may not understand why our products are there or what our products do. So this will kind of help you a little bit. So you're already seeing a slight transformation happening right here. Yes, I paint it with the drawers in first and then I come back and pull my drawers out and then paint along the edge where the drawer might, you know, still, you might still see some. And you see that I am coming in here and just kind of blocking out the area that I wanted to paint in the drop cloth. So this is gonna be a two-tone, very country cottage um, approach to this piece. I love antique furniture. I love being able to go into the ReStore and find something um, that's been, you know, kind of tossed aside and give it new life and get it back out because this furniture that you are finding at some of these rehab stores and um, Habitat's a good one, is furniture that has been, you know, well made or it wouldn't still be, you know, being passed around. So it's just that um, it just needs to be brought up into the, into our century, if you will. So in the 20, 21st century. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna just come right in here and give this a whole new vibe. And now I'm gonna just kind of spin it because I'm working with the drop cloth right now. So in the meantime, it's kind of cute, drying a little bit over there, drying enough for me to do something else to it. And I'm just gonna come in here and follow along the same idea. Now guess what? If you get this painted and you decide that um, you really don't like what you did, I, I suggest leave it, leave it till tomorrow, um, let it dry overnight, come back out and give it a look-see then. You might not like it tonight, but tomorrow, um, or you might love it tonight and tomorrow you might walk out and say, hey, that's not for me, let's change it. The best thing about it is, it's just a coat of paint away from a whole new piece. So just be patient with yourself and, um, and the piece. If it's not going where you thought it was, just let it sit and um, you can paint right over it with another coat of a different color and move on to a different vibe. So it's really not that, um, not that big of a deal. Let me see if I can't move this now. These pieces are very solid. So I'm gonna just turn her over here. Now we're gonna paint this side as well. Hopefully you guys can see. I know sometimes when you are painting on our live, um, sometimes the metapixels on the camera will jump around on you. So um, I hope it's not doing that. That's why I kind of got you backed away a little bit so it would stay clear through the video. So here I'm putting this in, putting this, this is just one coat covered. You see how wonderful it's covering. Now this is the chalk line. Silk line does the same thing. It covers just as well. 
chances are you will only need one coat um, and that why um, if you see you will see on our shelves eight ounce jars an eight ounce jar will almost paint well it would probably paint all three of these doing like I'm doing where you're doing kind of half and half uh, you could have one eight ounce jar of the Savannah mist and one eight ounce jar of the drop cloth and that will finish these three pieces so um but I think I'm going to do the tops in a darker color to kind of create a contrast and give it a whole new vibe. Just kind of bring new life to the piece. So as you, what I'm doing right now is I'm just coming in here and lightly sweeping across, cleaning up my brush strokes. And so pretty much we've got the drop cloth on. And I'm just going to kind of lean back here and see if I can see any. And I'm going to set my brush down here and then i will pick up my other brush that i have in behind us here pick up another now this is our flat this is a flat mini i will have all different kinds of brushes and this is the flat mini and i'm going to spin it around and i'm going to start on the other side and work with the savannah mist kind of show you guys whoop, if i can get her moved around Spin this little girl around. So um, our its paint dries relatively quickly, but I'm just going to kind of come out along the edges now. And um, so it's still wet on the center, but I'm not really going to be touching on the center. We're going to work out here on the edges. We can always clean up along the edge at a later time. But for now, I'm um, just for tonight's purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and go in here and start putting us some Savannah Mist in here. And I'm going to go on the edge so you guys can kind of see really how quickly it is to give this piece a new life. And I might need to pull you all down just a tad. Let me just see. So just so that you are actually seeing the bottom there. There we go. Let me see here. Just come in here. If you see that you make any, any, um, I'm just going to come right in here, cover up this green, cover up this yellow. And I, you notice I'm turning my brush on its flat edge to kind of give, cl clean that edge where I can just keep on painting. I'm going to paint under here because you're going to see that on the leg. So I'm just going to kind of give it a little paint around the edge here on these legs. And just keep on going so you can kind of see the difference um, having a piece painted would be. So let me just come in here. I'll spin it back around for y'all. Just thought it would kind of be good for those of you who are just kind of walking in and um, seeing some pieces that look like they need a little bit of upgrading. And um, this will help you kind of achieve that goal. And I would be coming in along this edge as well. And I might just pull it this way. Since I know my um, drop cloth is still still damp now if you were in a hurry or we were in a workshop we could use come in here and use a blow dryer because this is the chalk line so that would dry it much quicker so you can cheat a little bit if you need to um in in our situation not really going to do that I'm just gonna kind of give you a gist of where we're going with this piece so um, you do have uh, somewhat of a cure time. And you see I'm kind of staying away from the drop cloth just for the moment. Just so that it will give it um, a little ample time to dry. Just kind of coming along here on the edge. I'm probably most likely going to what I call dirty up the edge uh, with a little wax. So it won't actually be a perfect finish because I do like to make it kind of look used after the paint, if that makes any sense. 
So in our products, we can kind of do that. We can create that. So I know my drop cloth is damp, but I'm just going to come in here anyway, just for the purpose of showing you guys. And um, getting the getting the effect of what we're doing to the piece. So I'm just going to come in here and why it may not be perfect. We will come in and perfect it along the way since it is still still pretty damp on us. And I see a little spot here I want to clean up. So in case there are any runs on it. So just going to come continue along um, on the bottom here and show you pretty much how quick it is. This is really, really, really um, tenacious paint. Once you, um, once it gets on and it cures, it's pretty rock solid. It's pretty rock solid. We use, I use it for um, tile. Um, you can paint tile, old tile. Um, you can paint linoleum. Um, there's lots of beautiful stencils out there where you can paint um, a slick stick product that we have on linoleum or tile and you can paint old backsplashes and things like in a mobile home. You can um, paint your kitchen cabinets, your kitchen countertops where you've had that old formica and you want to upgrade without having to spend a tremendous amount of money. This is, this is the key right here. Being able to bring in a uh, chalk paint really will um, make things pretty quick for you as well as um, save you a tremendous amount of expense. Now I'm just using my brush here and just cutting in around that edge because I am going to come in and create that French country look with these colors. And so I'm um, cutting around that edge to do that. Okay, slide her around for us. So I can get her back enough, you guys can kind of see. Um, maybe that'll help you a little bit where you can kind of see where we are. I know it's a little bit distance away there, but it will help you to be able to see from from what we're doing. You can always zoom in on the video um, once we get it posted. And I'm just gonna come in here and put my color in. And so over here, I did come in here with the blue. I'm gonna try to bring that in as well. So this Phantom Mist is a very, very soft blue. Um, I really love it for, for this um, purpose. Just gonna kind of guide, guide it with my hand here a little bit. Just want you to be able to see how quick you can transform what you're seeing behind us. So again, if you're here with me tonight, thank you for jumping on. We are um, creating this video for all. Hey, Andrea. Hey, um, Miss Michelle is still with us tonight. We're. I'm just going to come along in here. Now I'm just going to cut it in with my brush. Sorry, I have to get my head in y'all's way. Just so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Just cut this in. And I'm just doing it with the edge of my brush and I have a very well used brush. A new brush will be a lot quicker because you probably don't have to be quite as uh, careful as I am. And I do have my other brush right here so I can come in. So I really don't normally paint two tone at one time, but for tonight's video, I wanted to just kind of give you guys a look see at the difference between the piece behind us versus the piece you're going to see in a moment. As we bring this, bring this piece totally and transform it from the yellow and green to something you want to have in your, in your room. 
or in your daughter's room in a nursery. Um, this would be so cute uh, with these vintage pieces. Instead of them being thrown out, we're reducing, we're reusing, and I'm telling you, this, this particular set I'm working with is a, um, we'll see what it says in here, a Hunt, Huntley Furniture by Thomasville. So you know this is a solid piece of furniture. So the whole set, this is a Thomasville set. So I'm going to come right up in here and add my paint. And again, just kind of cut along this edge. Not overloading my brush, just so because I'm being careful because I have this paint here. And um, there are a lot of ways you can change um, the look of this too. Um, this is what, and I can always change it after the fact. You could also come in here, and I'm just going to do it since we're since we're live. You can come in here and you can add. Um, some color here so you can add some blue you could dry brush it in i wouldn't necessarily i don't like this brush to dry brush it in i normally use a very light one but you could come in here and change the tone this way and adding some some color leaving it some blue leaving it some of the cream and um and for some some of you out there who want to go a little further you can come in and add a little bit of a of a wax so i'm coming back in with my other brush and cleaning up any mess makers that i made along the way so you can come in here and do this as well just as easy as i can you can come back in and um you could even come back in with a darker wax and dirty it up Sometimes I do that as well, and um, if I'm not getting any paint out of that brush because the paint's drying, come in and wet your brush because that wets the paint, and then that gives me just a little bit more. And you can kind of clean it up that way, and you can kind of add a little bit of dimension to your piece, some depth and some dimension, and um, around this edge as well. If you wanted to, you could do the exact same thing. And you could come in and add a different tone, another color. Um, in my case, probably a wax to kind of darken it up. And because the Savannah Savannah Mist looks a little bright right now, but that's what a lot of times I will do. I will come in with a wax and tone the color of the paint down. So you can always do that as well um, if you are want to be a little bit more adventurous in your painting. I'm going to come in here and clean up where I got the blue on my white. You can always, always, always change it. You, if you don't like it, you can always go back and change it. But you're kind of seeing how quick it is to just come in here, take you some paint. I'm going to come right on along this edge because then we can have this, this one kind of painted. Um, not all the way, obviously, um, to the finished end result that I'm looking to do, but it'll give you a good gist of the idea on, um, you know, transforming an old vintage piece with old vintage vibes and making it kind of the new, more modern style. Obviously, the Fixer Upper shows that are out there are um, definitely um, starting to show a lot more and making it a little more popular to um, paint the older furniture. Now older furniture is, is more being used prevalently, prevalently out there for this purpose. So I hear my husband coming in with my youngin, and I apologize if they come bursting through the door. I hear them, but I have the door locked, so they'll have to wait on me. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I'm still on. I hear her talking. You have a key? Yep. Go ahead. I'm, I'm still alive, though. Y'all can walk through. <laughs> okay. 
video. So there you go. I'm um, just kind of coming in here and there. Got to the finish line on that. So I can come along this edge. Now, a lot of times I, on this part up on the top, chances are I am gonna come in with a little darker color because I like to have that pop. So that kind of gives you an idea of what the furniture behind us looks like is the same furniture as the furniture you're seeing right here. And yes, I've got a few areas where it's not real clean line, um, but at the same time, you can always come back in. Like I say, you can always come back in and clean up any mistakes or lines that you have that you don't like. Always come back in with your brush and um, fix those, any um, imperfections. Most of the time, like I say, normally for myself, when I'm painting, if I'm painting a two-tone, I will normally paint the one color and let it cure overnight and then come in and paint the second color because chances are I might want to come in and do some blending along the way. And um, it's easier to do blending with your pieces once you've had a chance to let them cure or dry overnight. It makes it a little bit easier. And so that's probably what I'll do. I will let this kind of cure. And once I let it cure, I will come back in and then kind of maybe blend some of the pieces, some of the colors together. Um, I kind of like to do that as well, where you can kind of mix them into one another so they're not so stark apart from each other. But it gives you a great idea of, um, and then on the top here, I will probably paint this and we have a color that's called coffee bean, which would create a nice dark contrast on the tops from um, what you're seeing here on the bottom. So um, I just wanted to, um, reach out to you guys tonight those of you who are um, wandering through habitat and you're looking for um, a vintage piece to um, pick up and redo and transform into something new this is exactly a great way paint is a quick way to transform something from something old into something new again so, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little live tutorial. I'm going to set you up just a tad here. And so, there you can kind of see even better um, from the old coming into the new. And um, like I said, I'm going to add a few other details to this as we go along. Um, you will see on our shelves at the Habitat some waxes and some glazes and some different products like that where you can kind of tweak it out and kind of do your own thing with your piece. So um, the sky's the limit once you get um, some paint in your hand, a good piece of furniture, and, um, and let the transformations happen. So thank you so much for watching with us tonight. Um, again, thank you for uh, viewing our video and our tutorials. You can always find us on YouTube at The Vintage Queen as well as you can find us on Facebook at Unique Finds and Furniture Designs, as well as Pinterest and as, as well as Instagram. So all of those um, uh, social sites out there, we have, we have you covered. So if you are looking um, to rehab and um, transform something new from something old, just jump on there. Those videos are there for you and reach out to us. We will help you any way we can. Hope you enjoyed this uh, segment tonight. I hope you all have a blessed evening. And we will see you again on Tuesday. For those of you who are viewing with us on our normal workshops, we will see you again on Tuesday evening and see what we did to change these. So hope you all have a blessed evening and a great weekend, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.